Hey, Samantha here. So we are talking about The Ethical Slut, Janet Hardy, Dossie Easton, um, some principles in it. It's an introduction book for a variety of sexualities and relationship practices. So in this video, we're going to talk about polyamory a little bit. Um, if it is a new concept to you, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. If you are more experienced with it, thanks for watching too. Um, if you guys have any comments or any thoughts on the matter, please share them. Agreements, disagreements, any additional things you want to add, uh, we're open to everything really. So talking, and if you guys are following along in the third edition um, updated and revised paperback, we're on chapter 7 around page 60. That's where the first introduction into polyamory really takes place. There are some more later in the book. Um, so the first thing is when I'm talking about friendly sex. So friendly sex is when you have a friend and it you guys sleep together, basically. This includes like friends with benefits types of situations. Some people consider that polyamory, some do not. That is kind of a gray area, depends on which community you ask. Sorry, I need a neck pop there. So there is a polyfidelity group, um, polyfidelity is kind of like if you had a monogamous relationship that was grouped to more than two people, like three or four people. It is a group, you are monogamous within that group, um, hence the term polyfidelity. And if you want to sleep with anybody outside that group or have a relationship with them, even not sexual, any kind of um, relationship that you would gather with them, you would want to talk to your group about that and make sure everyone's on the same page. When you bring somebody new into the group, everybody is consulted, everybody has to be on board. So that's a little bit of what polyfidelity is. There is also a hierarchical poly relationship, which is the one that I am personally most familiar with. Hierarchical poly relationships have a primary partner, a possible secondary and tertiary partner on down the line. So that is just saying basically what it sounds like hierarchical, you have a hierarchy in your partner list. So you have one, um, to give an example here, maybe you have a married couple and they are each other's primary partners. They would also be nesting partners in this case usually, but um, they're each other primary partners and then they have a girlfriend or a boyfriend outside of that. They are secondary partners. So any decisions that have to be made, yes, everybody would be aware, everybody would be on board with, but you are mostly devoting your time, energy, and whatnot to your primary partner. So that is basically what hierarchical poly is. There's also relationship anarchy, which is a fairly new term to me. And that basically just means you have an open poly group, but there is no hierarchy. So kind of like polyfidelity, but open. Or like the hierarchical group, but without a listing. Um, I'm not sure honestly how that would work. I've never done that. How you would balance everyone's needs in an open group where people could be constantly being added without having a, um, a hierarchy of some kind. I'm not sure how that would work. That's something that I've experienced, but that is what relationship anarchy, polyanarchy is. There's also another um, group here that may or may not be poly depending on how you look at it, and that is a uh, unicorn. So if you've never heard of a unicorn before, it is not the cool animal with a little horn. Um, a unicorn is a third party that joins an existing relationship. So you would have a primary partner and then you have a third party that comes in that is part of your relationship to both of you. So for example, you and let's just take a heterosexual or bisexual married couple for this example, you have a husband and a wife and you guys find a girlfriend, they are um, in a relationship with you guys as a married couple. They may or may not have their own separate relationships with each one of you, but there is a relationship with you as a married couple. They may live with you, so on and so forth. Um, I consider that part of the poly group. Some people do not. It just, again, depends on who you ask. Those are really the quick types of poly that you see most common. Um, there's also another really important factor in poly relationships called a metamor relationship. We're going to talk about that in another video because it's kind of its own thing. So thanks for tuning in and check out the playlist below with the rest of the videos on this book.